In this video, we'll show how to use Multi-Site Orchestrator, or MSO, to manage multiple DCNM fabrics from a single location. We'll also demonstrate how to import existing DCNM fabric configurations, including fabrics that are part of a multi-site domain, or MSD, and to stretch those configurations across multiple greenfield or brownfield fabrics. Before you begin, you must have Nexus Dashboard Platform deployed and the MSO application installed. We begin by first onboarding the DCNM fabrics as individual sites to the Nexus Dashboard. Here you can see I already have Fabric 1 from our example, so we will add the other two fabrics that are part of MSD. From the Actions menu, select Add Site. In the Add Site screen, choose DCNM and provide the DCNM controller credentials. Note that you must provide the in-band IP address of the controller. After you've entered the login information, click Select Sites. Here you can choose which fabrics to import. For example, we'll choose Fabric 2 and Fabric 3. Since both fabrics are part of the same MSD, you must add them at the same time and the UI will not allow you to select just one of the fabrics. Finally, click Add to finish adding the sites and wait for the connectivity status to change from Unknown to Up. Notice that if the site is part of MSD, the site ID will be pre-populated with the existing site ID from DCNM. Notice that if the site is part of MSD, the site ID will be pre-populated with the existing site ID from DCNM. If the site is not part of MSD, you must enter a unique site ID when setting the site to managed. Note the site IDs. You will need them later to configure the underlay. After the sites are onboarded in ND and managed by MSO, we need to configure the infra settings for BGP EVPN overlay and underlay between the sites. From the main menu, select the Infra Configuration page. Here you can configure BGP peering settings. For the purpose of this demo, we'll use the default values. Note that the multi-site routing loopback IP range will be used to allocate overlay TEP addresses for each fabric. Fabrics that are part of an existing MSD will have the TEP addresses pre-populated. While you will need to specify one for standalone fabrics, you can choose to simply click Auto Allocate to automatically assign a TEP address from the loopback IP range we mentioned earlier. Now let's configure the underlay between the MSD fabrics and the standalone fabric. Select Fabric 1 and click its border gateway. Change the TEP address if needed. We will use the default values. Then click Add Port to provide the interface information for the port that connects this fabric to another fabric, in this case Fabric 2. For the Remote ASN field, use the Site ID of Fabric 2. Now that we configured the interface in Fabric 1, we need to do the same for the interface to which it connects in Fabric 2. Repeat the same steps for Fabric 1 interface that connects to Fabric 3. And Fabric 3's interface connecting back to Fabric 1. Note that Fabric 3 has two border gateways, both of which connect to Fabric 1. So we'll need to configure a third port in Fabric 1, which connects to the second border gateway in Fabric 3, and vice versa. Note that because Fabric 2 and Fabric 3 are already part of MSD, you don't need to configure underlay connectivity between those two fabrics in MSO. After all configuration is entered, click Deploy to deploy it to each fabric's switches.
you can verify that the inner site connectivity was established between the fabrics by checking the Fabric Builder screen in the DCNM controllers. Here you can see Fabric 2 and Fabric 3 connectivity established in DCNM1, which manages Fabric 1 only, and Fabric 1 connectivity is available in DCNM2, which manages Fabric 2 and Fabric 3. After the site's infra configurations are deployed, we can proceed with creating a configuration schema and templates. The schema is just a collection of templates, with each template defining a set of configuration objects and options that you can deploy to one or more sites. Navigate to the Application Management Schema and then click Add Schema and provide the name for the schema. Then in the top left of the schema window, click the plus sign to create the first template and choose Networking for DCNM site configurations. Optionally, you can edit the name of the template by clicking the Edit icon next to its name or updating the Display Name field in the Properties sidebar on the right. Finally, select DCNM Default TN from the dropdown. This tenant is created in MSO by default specifically for defining objects and configurations for DCNM sites. To do that, let's first associate the template we just created with all sites. Click the plus sign next to sites, then check all the sites and assign them to the template you created. Ensure that you save the template before you can import existing configurations. Click Import and select the fabric we will first import from Fabric 2. In the Import screen, you can select all or some of the existing objects. We will import Engineering 11 and Corporate 11 networks. We'll also check the Include Relations box to ensure that the verfs used by these two networks are also imported. Alternatively, you can select the verbs manually. Notice that if you now select the template under the Fabric 2 site, the networks will have switch and port configurations already imported. However, if you select the template under Fabric 3, where the same networks also exist, the switch configuration will be empty. To get the Fabric 3 interface configuration for the networks we imported, we import the same networks again this time from Fabric 3. Now if you go back to the Fabric 3 specific template configuration, you'll see the switch and port information for the networks. Notice that the same networks have no switch configuration for Fabric 1, as those networks do not yet exist for that fabric. Before we specify to which ports in Fabric 1 the networks will be assigned, let's first deploy the configuration. As you can see in DCNM UI, Fabric 1 does not have the two networks that we imported from Fabric 2 and 3 into MSO. Click Deploy to Sites in the template view. Verify the verbs and networks that are being pushed to each fabric and deploy. This may take a couple minutes. If you now switch back to the DCNM UI, you will see that Engineering 11 and Corporate 11 networks, along with their verbs, were deployed to Fabric 1. While the VRF and network were created in Fabric 1, they were not assigned to any switch ports. Let's do that now. Select the template under Fabric 1, then select the network we deployed. In the right sidebar, click Add Static Ports. Then select the switch and the ports to which you want to assign the network's VLAN. Save and then select the template from the Templates category on the left. Finally, click Deploy again. You can once again verify the change by navigating back to the DCNM GUI and refreshing the Networks page. The status of the network will go from NA to In Progress to Deployed. Now let's show one more example where we create brand new networks in MSO and deploy them to all or some of the fabrics. In the main template view, click Create Object and choose Network. In the right sidebar, provide the name and ID for the network. You can choose to leave the ID field empty, in which case the VLAN ID will be used. Choose the VRF. In our case, we will use the existing ENG VRF. Provide the VLAN ID. 
Then click Add Subnet to define the subnet for the network. In the Add Subnet window, provide the gateway IP address and net mask. Note that you need to click the checkmark icon to save the subnet, then click Add. Save the template and click Deploy to Sites. Once the deployment is successful, verify the new network was deployed to all fabrics. You can assign the new network to switches and ports for each site individually, as was shown previously. As a final example, let's create another network but only deploy it to Fabric 2 and Fabric 3. Note that since all objects within the same template are deployed at the same time, and template 1 is already assigned to every site, we need to create a second template which will be assigned only to Fabric 2 and Fabric 3. After the new template is ready and assigned to sites, create a new network within that template. For simplicity, we'll continue to use the same ENG verf we used for existing networks. And finally, once the second template is deployed, verify that Engineering 13 network was created in Fabric 2 and 3, but not in Fabric 1. For additional information, please visit this site. Thank you for watching.